fun potentially disastrous but hey innovating <laughs> hey everybody are they wishing oh my goodness they come. Look at that. like i haven't said this in a long time whoosh <laughs> <laughs> welcome everybody today's an exciting day because we have Gigi back with us we have a couple special guests they're always at the top of my screen i don't know um, if you can see, if you can see who our special guests are, go ahead and say hi to them in the chat. Welcome. Um, happy Sunday, whether it's, um, would it be morning for someone? I don't know, but it is evening here on the East coast. And we are so excited to have our shining with the stars live with all of you and, um, Casa Pinka, who has been our guest of honor all month. So make sure you say hello and say where you are watching from. We are, um, the Knit Stars team is here, Beth, me, Shelly, Gigi, and then Adela um, Lola Bean Yarnko is also over here, and Casapinka is right down here for me. And then we have our rising star for the month of March, um, who is Judy Miller, who is off to <laughs> oh. Yay! So happy to see so many of you here. And welcome to everybody who is not in the Yarniverse and are just are also our special guests. We know we made this one public, so we have a lot of new friends and faces here. We're so excited to see you just as a quick rundown of what we do. It's a quick hour. Well, it's a quick 58 now. Um, we have been in the green room, which is basically where we all just talk and make sure everyone's ready to go. Um, and we're super excited to have you all here with us. But the Yarniverse, great place. We'll talk about it a little bit. Might drop a link if anybody is interested in joining us in this wonderful community. Um, and I think that's sort of it. Shelly, you want to say hello? Sorry, I've been talking a lot. No, it's all good. It's really exciting. Um, we're, we've been super excited for this one. And then plus we have the bonus of Miss Gigi, who is always with us and another special guest invited by Casa Pinka. Apparently I found out about the special guest was going to be here about two minutes ago. So super excited for that. So everybody who showed up today is going to get some, some bonus fun. And I said in the green room, I think we might need a talking stick for this one because everybody was very <laughs> chatty. <laughs> it could yeah. get spicy. <laughs> yes. And if you're wearing anything, um, any of Casa Pinka's designs, or if you're wearing some Lola Bean Yarn Co., make sure you have your cameras on so we can highlight you. At some, oh, I see Gigi might be wearing. Um, let's see. What are you wearing? What you wearing? Unmute, unmute. This is exclusive Knit Stars dyed by the one and only Adela of Lola Bean. So I, I didn't know she was going to be here. This is just a coincidence. <laughs> this is a coincidence, but yeah. I am the infamous. This is from, what season was I? Five. Season five, <laughs> yep. Citrus Sunrise. Yes, yes, yes. And it's the orange that almost killed all orange for Lola Bean Yarn Company. <laughs> And we are here to support, oh, you know what I need, Adela? What? That picture of the three of us. Oh, when Casapinka was making faces? Right. Yes. Yes. Never. She, never. She, you got the receipts? Don't tell carry me. Carry on. I will find it. Carry we'll find it. Her. I, I got know. what to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she always blames everybody else. But we never. <laughs> Yay, yay, yay. All right. Well, well it was a great start, you guys. <laughs> Looking good. <laughs> All right. So today we are going to be talking with Casa Pinka a little bit. If you haven't caught all of the um, segments from this month, um, we had, as usual, our Frogging with the Stars, Making with the Stars, Styling with the Stars segments. Each week, we're bringing new content into the Yarniverse with our wonderful stars. That is in the portal right now, but we are going to be talking a little bit about those segments um, today, and then we'll be talking to our rising star as well. So, um, Shelly, anything else housekeeping-wise? Oh, I have one. 
We love giving away prizes. Um, and most of the time when we're doing it, we are doing it from the chat. So if you make sure you are in the chat, we'll pick some random winners for some lovely things. And um, if we have some time, maybe a game with another prize. Ooh. And this is, who, who is this, Casapinka? <laughs> yeah, Casapinka introduced Sorry, say that again. I stepped on you. Oh, I just said it's one of my employees named Sharon. She's supportive. <laughs> Yes, and I clipped this from, right from your lifestyle video. So if anybody hasn't seen the lifestyle video, also in the portal. All right, I'll remove myself and pass it over to you, Shelly. Oh, no, you're all good. I should probably say what the when you're talking about portal and stuff for the people who, who don't who aren't current Yarniverse members. So um, there are about 50 workshops from previous Knit Star season in the Knit Stars Yarniverse portal organized by what we call tracks. So wherever you are and on your learning journey. And so Casa Pinkas is one of those courses that is inside of um, the Yarniverse. If you're not a member, um, you can actually watch our whole Knit Stars course inside along with 50 others. So that's what that is about. But yeah, so we, Brody and I got on Zoom um, about a month ago now and had a very awesome, fun catch up. Uh, as always fun. We hardly had to cut anything out of it. I think all of it. Oh, really? Almost, yeah, almost all of it made it in to the final cut, which is saying, Almost, almost. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh -huh. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, but we started with frogging with the stars. This is what we do each month. So the first, we started talking about frogging and we're really interested in it. Um, it's something I've gotten really interested in this past year. Frogging um, in two ways, frogging our yarn because it can be super stressful and emotional, but also really freeing when you frog stuff and just kind of wanting to normalize frogging more for everybody, but also frogging in life in ways that we, um, I've frogged my life a whole lot in the last couple of years and re-knit whole new things, which is has been awesome, exciting, difficult at times and awesome. So everybody noticed that you actually, if, if our Yarniverse members have been paying close attention, you frogged an entire project over the course of our conversation. And, you know, some stars will bring a thing on to frog, um you did and you were so brave about it it was like you it was like you didn't even think about it you just like pulled it off and I think there was kind of like a <gasps> moment for everybody out there watching it so I wonder first can you share some tips on like why was that so easy for you how have you gotten to that point that you can just like rip that whole thing off and pull it out okay I feel really stupid remind me what color what was it that I frogged I can't <laughs> well, remember now frogging? Oh, and now I don't remember either. I just remember the first traumatic moment of you ripping the whole thing off. And you, oh, it was the, it was the penguin. It, it was, was the penguin. hat. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, the oh. penguin hat. That's like not the newest design. Frog. That's right. Yeah. So the thing is, if you don't frog it, see, the way I look at it, you're going to wear it or gift it or you're not. And you can get a, a huge stash of things you're not going to wear, right? So I only like to like knit things I'm going to wear or give away or have in a trunk show. So it was going to sit there. So that's why it was really easy for me. And I feel like when it sits there, it collects dust and I have to like pack it away so it doesn't get moss. It's just like this big thing. So it's just easy. Whether it, I mean, sweater is harder. Something that takes longer is harder. But when you knit a lot, I think it gets easier. And, you know, it's just like anything, keeping anything in your life that isn't working, even if it's just a hat doesn't work the, the thing you were frogging though I'll show the clip because I don't think you did frog a hat but you also were frogging a current project okay I'm sorry I didn't remember it yes like, I'm super apologetic everybody is everybody no like if you cut down to the real stuff can you see it or not is it going to really bug you mm -hmm. and I feel like everyone has hold on let me find grown. it that sounds like me oh. so I can spend 30 minutes trying to make it happen oh that's a stupid thing do this right. yeah and pull it off and like time, you should time me. Yeah. you should yeah. time me i remember that stupid thing see i like blocked it wait so, why are you calling it that stupid thing because at the time you were i i am in love with that thing that thing oh that no i love it but what happened was and i don't remember how much i explained it at the time but i started off at the bottom it was a summer top and i really loved it and i made up this stitch this stitch and everything but it was in the round when it started off because it was a made-up stitch when you go back and forth it changed the look of it 
and I couldn't get the repeats to work right without being very confusing and cutting your yarn every two times when I went back and forth. So I know you can get away when you're designing with a few things that people will be a pain, but not too many. And it was over the too many. So I couldn't put the design out and I have all this beautiful yarn, right? So what I did after frogging it, because I, um, because I just love that blue color. I re-engineered, I talked to my tech editor and we went through all the numbers. So this is the boring part of knitting design that you guys, you guys don't have to um, be bogged down with, but we went through, you know, what could we do? And then I stuck it, I have a bin with still what I call new yarn. Like it's still got the polish on it. It's not like, uh, you know, and so I put it in that bin ready to look at again. And I guess I'll probably get to it this week now that I've been reminded. So yeah, it was, that was hard because I tried it and went back a million times and then I committed to it and then just was like, no, it's too tough. So yeah. 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 People are saying in the comments, like how good it feels when you do, it's kind of, and I think this is key. Once you've made the decision to frog. Right. Yeah. It's the decision. That's the hard part. But then I think the, the, uh, the frogging is a big release. Don't you think? Yeah, and I think that really goes to show the fact that I hadn't remembered. I don't remember the trauma of frog. I do remember being really frustrated at the time that I couldn't get it to work. But then if you frog it quickly, or sometimes I always tell people, like, give it to somebody else. Um, this one was kind of tangled because it had a lot of, you know, color things in the back. So I didn't give it to like my kids or anything, but that can actually take some of the angst out of it because now you come back and it's all neatly wound and you take a break from it. And now I'm ready to go back to it. I was going to say, what do you, do you know what you're going to make with it? Have you decided what you're doing with? Oh, I'm the redoing the same thing, except the stitch will be, it will work out back and forth and in the round. Okay. All right. Yeah. Perfect. Well, and I the other thing though, was that penguin cowl, it was a penguin hat in the colors that you didn't like. You thought it was too baby blanket or something, right? I you talking, that was easy. I thought you were talking about the blue and white. The you sweater. did both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, the penguin hat. Yeah, that was just two baby blanket colors, but that was little. That's easy to frog. I'd made six of them to try to get the pattern right since then. Anyway, before I wonder I... If people realize that you made six of them, like I wonder if people really realize. I think a lot of times they think how slow I am. <laughs> at getting things right. You are very you're meticulous, which is I think something people appreciate oh, about patterns because they can trust your patterns, right? Oh, um, but the time it gets to people, hopefully everything is correct. But to get there, it can be. A little tough. And I don't think, I think sometimes people assume you use test knitters and like designers don't, they don't realize you may have made that exact same thing six times or more, you know, by the time it goes out. In Before the it even goes to the testers. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So are you, do you know what you're going to do with that yarn? Do you think I'll make a baby, baby blanket out of it? No, wait, are you talking about the hat? So I don't have that much of one. I don't yeah, have that much of yarn. So no, it's just what I did with this. I rolled, I have a lot of little um, balls that I keep in. I hate when I say that. It just always sounds rude or like man hating <laughs> keeping my bag and I zip it up. Um, so anyway, and I think I'm hopefully, I'm sorry. Can you delete this? Oh, it's live. Great. It's live. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then I keep them in a, a bag and then I'm always, I'm always planning to do scrap patterns, but I really think I am Gigi stop looking at me like that. I think I'm going to do one this, this summer or fall. So I just kept it for scraps. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. There's a great, there's a great line. Um, I can't remember who the, where the quote is, but I saw, found it at just the right time. And it was, um, you won't believe how fast everything will start to change and your life will move forward once you have decided. And oh, we have a guest. Sharon wanted to say hi to <laughs> What did Sharon say about the frogging? But well, she said, frog it, bitches. <laughs> Didn't you? Yes. Sorry, <laughs> There's a perp over there. She's like, I'm out of here. Give me my stun gun. So, <laughs> I thought she was going to be a little bit of a better contributor. She's been or emailing with my Havanese ever since I made the Sharon show. <laughs> Your Havanese. <laughs> he's become yeah. a real stalker. Watch out. He's a he's an honorary cat. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of, he reminded me of that comedian who has the- you guys can see this. What is Sorry. this? What is, wait, What's what was that? Tale? It was Sharon's tail. Didn't that make her mad? Yeah, did you hear her meow? No, yeah. I missed the meow. Oh okay. no, don't pull it again. No. Oh no, I didn't pull it. I just, it was there. I didn't pull it. It's like a windshield wiper. <laughs> okay, so let's talk a little bit. 
Let's talk about um, your making segment. So that was your second segment. And um, so we did we do Frogging with the Stars, then we do Making with the Stars. And in the making one, it could be about anything. We talked about what we were making, but also like what new makers you found lately. And you mentioned several from Etsy. So our team was wondering just internally, how do you find what I, because I don't spend time just searching Etsy. So how do you find stuff on Etsy? How do you oh, find- I like to browse Etsy. Pinterest, yeah. Etsy, looking for inspiration. I think sometimes like, you know, those, I'm sort of an insomniac. So at night, which is super healthy to get on a screen, right? When you can't sleep, but nevertheless. And so I love looking at Pinterest and Etsy for things. And then like, um, you know, like those tweed bags, even though it's not my usual thing, I just thought they were really cool. How they had the hole in them. And yeah. They, and they, yeah, you shared some bags. There were some yeah. a bunch of really cool things outside of yarn that you shared. A yarn yeah. Yeah. And so that's your tip. Just get on umbrellas. Do you have any like tips for like finding cool stuff? Do you have any favorite, you know, any favorite ways to find that stuff for people who don't spend a lot of time browsing? So sometimes I put it in color. I'll just put in a color and I'll put something like, um, so I really like the pattern design. Why are you laughing at me? Marimekko. I'm and sorry. So I'll put in Marimekko by pink or orange. Okay. I was laughing because I could see Gigi going. Orange. I don't really, I don't really put in orange, but I just thought I'd throw her a bone. So things like that, or graphic seventies design bag graphics, things like that. That's what I like to do. Uh huh. That's really fun. I mean, that I just I love the idea of like browsing around in yarn adjacent things, and so and sometimes it sounds kind of silly to say, well, how do you browse? But like, you know, going to Ravelry, there's a gazillion ways of browsing, and there's a there's a, it's a definite skill to learn to to just search. To be yeah. Which speaking of, so I know you mentioned you have um, a make along coming up. Do you have, what do you have coming up in the future for those who maybe haven't gotten to watch all of the segments? You want to give some sneak peeks or insider? Info? Well, in April, we are doing, I'm just reaching it. There's a, um, this is called Ancho Pay. We're doing this in the Casa Pinka group on Ravelry mm -hmm. and it's got a big, just comfy thing. So that's um, done in Malabrigo Rios. And oh, then we have a mystery in July that we do every year, mystery knit along. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I have scheduled coming up. And I wonder like the people who are in the chat, how many of y'all are in um, Casapinko's, Ravel Casapinko's Ravelry group? I'm curious how many of who here is who to, yeah, I can't talk. How many of who is here today? is nobody up. she sucks no, no because your ravelry group is really active i mean some designers have have more are more active on ravelry well, than i have others. amazing moderators like mm -hmm. they're, they're just state of the art they're amazing one of them runs my retreats and the other one comes on the retreats and we just have a blast so they are so good because it's really hard to be everywhere and so like i think they just channel what i'm thinking and then um someone asked i saw it pop up on that if this was um pattern was out and no it's not but it will be imminently if my moderators kick my butt enough tonight maybe for now <laughs> ready to go it's been tested what's that I, I said how'd you find your moderators i'm curious like have they been with you a long time and how did you guys yeah. get i think they were in the group and we messaged back a couple of times i don't remember exactly how it happened and they were even one of them was even saltier than i am no the other one's not very salty but she can be and like we just hit it off and <laughs> i don't they just said you need moderators you're not doing a good job and i said that's true and you want us to moderate okay they and said that to you they came this, this was that the salty one they're probably a little more diplomatic than that but they were right i mean i just it's hard to be everywhere like for me personally because i'm such a slow designer it's very all-encompassing it's hard to like then be on instagram and blah, blah, blah. You know that whole ADD thing kicks in pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where do you personally spend? What do you spend most of your time on of all your different channels? Oh, different channels. Um, probably um Sharon's Facebook page, Sharon from Security's Facebook page. But um, honestly, I don't spend that much time on any of them because I spend so much time knitting and frogging so you won't have to when you buy the pattern and knitting that's what I spend most of my time on is probably knitting mm -hmm. oh and going to Antarctica and things oh like yeah that. me too <laughs> I knitted there I knit 
Well, and I know you t you spend a lot of time on your newsletter because we were talking about it. Like it, it takes you a long time to write your newsletter, which I love. That means you really put your heart into it, right? I think, well, I also have an uncooperative helper, Sharon, that mm -hmm. comes and like deletes stuff and she's not really a team player. So yeah. yeah, I don't know why it takes me so long. I feel like I'm probably the longest. That's why I only send one every one or two months. I don't know why they just take a long time to get the pretty pictures in. And I don't know why. Maybe I'm just discovering I'm not very fast at anything. I think you're fast at everything <laughs> yeah. from what I can tell. Um, and I offered actually to swap with you. I was like, well, if you'll write mine, because I write one every week. I'm like, if you write I mine, I write do yours. It. But then I was like, I don't know that I could get Sharon's voice down just right. You know, I don't know that Sharon would be so freely willing to talk to me since I'm more of a dog person. She might be an issue. Yeah, so. She might sense that. I, I think she already I'm does. I'm a dog person too, though. I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm a cat person. I'm, I'm not a crazy cat person. Okay. Just so that's on the GDP. You figure that out. You, it's a certain number of cats in your mind that we you yeah four or more makes you that person <laughs> anyone here feeling called out <laughs> three. Oh, that's nothing so did anybody i want to ask because we have a whole lot of people here today which is awesome thank you guys yeah. up. so does anybody in the if you guys in the chat have a question i'd love to hear it or you can also use the question and answer function and we will take questions because I'm sure there's many burning ones also that I'm missing. Sunny, have you seen any come by that we need to highlight? Um, one question is for the mystery knit along, is your design process for mystery knit alongs different than your normal designs? Are you thinking about different things? Like what is the process looking like for that? Yeah. So the process for that is different because it's usually over six weeks and so I don't want a completely repetitive pattern because that's not the time to just have completely Zen six weeks because people are expecting something new every week. And so um, I won't just do one color, for example, not that I ever do, but sometimes every once in a while I do. And so I try to make every week different. And so now I'm at that point where I was talking to Miss Babs because I traditionally do it with Miss Babs and then we open it up to all the dyers except ones who don't offer free yarn to you when they get on your, sorry, your Zoom call. But anyway, I'm gonna get in trouble for that, aren't I? So <laughs> I'm totally gonna like eat dirt for that. So anyway, so I was on to her and she said, you know, what, what colors do you want? So today I was on the website trying to find, because they have the match the colors Miss Babs does on the website. So it's really helpful to, so I don't have to say, can you send me a hundred skeins of yarn? So that's where I am now. And I'm looking at four colors. And you also have to think, I was talking to my Patreon group last night about we were having a, um, a monthly knit session. And, you know, I like to just sort of poll people. And someone said, can we do a sweater? But a mystery knit along sweater is really tough because if you do a shawl or a cowl, it fits everybody. And when you get into sizing, everyone's going to have different yarn amounts. So that's tough that's the other thing you um so that's why I genuinely generally do a shawl for the mystery okay sorry I got distracted there for a second because I was I, I got distracted from that because we were talking in the background because I just realized I haven't asked you yet about your nonprofit. and every time we do a yarniverse we always like to when we have a star on for the month or for anything we like to highlight a favorite nonprofit that means something to you. And I, so I was like in the background going, wait, what's her nonprofit? So can you- wait, after, I, after I give out to her, now you're going to do this? This is awkward. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm good at making it awkward. But I do okay. I, actually, so I just saw what it is, but I don't know about that nonprofit. So I'm really interested to learn about it. So can you share what your nonprofit is that we you want to highlight? And we do this every time because we like to, bring attention to interesting to people who are doing cool nonprofit important work in the world and then we give a donation also to the nonprofit and then we'll put the link up we were scrambling in the background to find the link so um we will find that or you maybe you have one but can you share what it is and tell everybody what you've chosen yeah so in february i came across that adela from lola bean and i'm going to be nice to you now adela she um her mom had passed and she told a really actually genuinely poignant story about her mom at the VA in the Bronx and how, you know, her life service was very important to her. And then 
with the oncology, um, they set up something called Maddie's um, uh, with the oncology ward. They set up something called Maddie's Meals, and I'm going to let Adela tell more about it because I'm just going to. I don't think I can do. I can do it justice like she can, and I will be on my best behavior. Um, <clears throat> first, uh, thank you, Bronwyn. Uh, I'm going to be nice to you too. Okay. Truth. Uh, only for this hour, then it's on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, um, no, seriously, thank you. This was really unexpected. When I got your message, um, this morning, I was like super, super touched. And I also want to thank Shelly and the, um, entire Knit Stars team, because you were kind enough to share this, um, in your newsletter. Um, so thank you for that. But, <clears throat> uh, as my mom was in hospice and, uh, she was putting together, you know, finishing off her affairs and, uh, you know, doing all the things that, you know, she wanted to do and saying the things that she wanted to say, she was kind of struggling because she wanted to do like one last act of service. And she didn't know what she had wanted that to be. And we were sitting in her hospice room and her oncology team uh, came in to visit with her to say their goodbyes to her. And I'm watching these nurses and the oncology team and my mom have this interaction and it was like a light bulb moment. And, you know, I waited for them to finish. And I said, can I ask a question? I said, is there anything specifically that your department needs that maybe you don't necessarily have the funding for? I said, because I have a small business and I do, you know, fundraising every quarter for different uh, organizations. Um, and I think it would be a wonderful thing, you know, to uh, honor my mother to maybe do a fundraiser and get you whatever it is you may need. Um, and, you know, they were just explaining to me how understaffed, uh, excuse me, underfunded most VA hospitals are um, in terms of even basic supplies, you know, so we won't even go into like not having the funding for research for all these different, you know, uh, ailments and diseases and cancers, you know, they just don't have a lot of funding. Um, so they said, you know what, we're going to have a team meeting and we'll get back to you. Uh, and they got back to me and they said, you know, they could really use funds for research on rare cancers that a lot of these vets, uh, are coming, you know, into the hospital for, uh, and then one of them said, and we'd also like to do something more specific, uh, you know, to your mother, because while my mother was going through her chemotherapy, and we're talking about my mom was fighting since 2018, um, while she was going through like all of these really aggressive treatments, and she would feed the people in the oncology department, the patients that were there, like she would cook a meal on days that she knew she would have chemo, and she'd bring it in and she's feeding the nurses, she's feeding other chemo patients that are there, because that was just her love language. That was what she could do. And that's what she loved to do. Um, so they said they wanted to start a program called Maddie's Meals, where when veterans come in for their treatments, usually they get like a sack lunch. There's nothing wrong with that, right? And, you know, a meal is a meal. Um, but they were going to give, they're going to start to give veterans hot meals, home cooked meals, you know, um, from different restaurants and establishments around the Bronx VA. Um, just because, you know, something like a warm meal can absolutely let somebody know that you care, right? Or they matter or kind of lift their spirits, especially um, when they're going through something like chemotherapy, which is very taxing and just hard. Um, so Maddie's Meals is one program um, that they're going to be starting at the Bronx VA in her honor, in her memory, um, but also uh, through fund, you know, my fundraising efforts, our fundraising efforts, um, research, money's going to go to research for the, the different rare cancers that a lot of vets are coming in with, and just quality. So her doctor was explaining to me how, you know, she's been to other like chemotherapy places, and they have so many different things. They have dancers come in sometimes to entertain people while they're getting chemotherapy, just all these different things because the mind-body connection is very important, right? So if you can keep people in good spirits and you can bring them joy, if you can do those types of things, it can absolutely help in their treatment. So um, 
we've already raised enough money for virtual reality goggles. So if you're sitting there having chemotherapy and these are medical grade, we're not talking like call of duty, right? You can sit there having your chemo treatment while you're on the beach meditating. Mm. While you're walking through a rainforest. So um, the Bronx Veterans Medical Research Foundation is the name of the organization. Um, I'm actually flying to New York next, uh, excuse me, this week, flying to New York to sit with them because they want to take this first step that we're doing and sort of start to implement it across all VAs. Um, and they've invited me to be a part of that. Um, wow. So that's how this whole thing got started. And when Bronwyn, I'm trying not to get choked up. I can't let Bronwyn see me cry because, you know, that she's going to think I'm a punk. But um, I was so moved. I already think that, but go on. I, I know. Okay, good. So so we've got that out of the oh, way. We're good. We can throw down later. Um, so moved to be able to help my mom with her last act of service to help other people in this world and on a selfish level to, to keep her memory alive, you know, so to be able to do all of that through this one thing is a blessing. Um, so thank you, Bronwyn. Thank you, Shelly. Thank you, Knit Stars, um, to everybody who's donated, who shared. I, I greatly, greatly appreciate it. That is unbelievable. I didn't know the latest part. I had some that had escaped. Is that relatively new that you found that out? Um, I found out, but I'm one of those like weird people who I won't say things out loud until it's actually about to happen because I don't want to like jinx it, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, but the head of the foundation uh, called me. We had a conversation and he explained because I explained to him that my mom had is very educated, lots of master's degrees, all these things but she chose to teach in the South Bronx, one of the poorest congressional districts in the United States, because she felt like, you know, if everybody who comes from that environment makes something of themselves and leaves, who helps the people that are still there? So she stood there and she taught uh, people who were coming to this country English. She taught them how to go to a restaurant and order food. She taught them how to get library cards, you know, to make their transition to a new country um, a little easier. And the head of the foundation is actually, he immigrated to this country from Africa. And he was so emotional because he said, you know, if it weren't for people like your mother, I wouldn't have made it, you know, to where I am today. And we just, you know, really got to talking. So um, I've been invited, you know, to lend my voice and to make sure that, you know, her wishes are being carried out in the way she would want them to. So I'm, I'm pretty, I'm excited about this, this next step. <laughs> well, I think that's really powerful too, because things don't always happen the way they should at the VA. Um, I think when that was another thing that got me when I saw it, and I think it was February where I saw it when Shelly yeah. we were chatting, but um, so I loved, I used to work oh, in the VA in Albuquerque and I loved it. Underwater. A fatal and then my husband as well, like we've all really, always really felt in general that the VA patients are, are special. Just, there's just something really different about the VA patients. It's hard to articulate because it's not one size fits all, but it's severely underfunded. A lot of people there are really, I mean, like you were talking about, I mean, you may not have band-aids on hand. You may not have, you know, they may not have enough IVs in the ED store, things like that. And so something like this, I can't even imagine what a boon and how grateful they are to have this, to it sounds like you were able to kind of cement it so they could get something really started and launch it from there. And what would be interesting as well, I mean, we can talk later too, because there is federal funding that can come in for the, through the NIH, I think for certain VA grants as well mm -hmm. for research. So maybe we can chat later as well. Definitely. Yes. Thank just you for sharing her story. Really, really. And for what you did to amplify and make it happen. And just the fact that it, that it is based on the person that she was, that you took something so tangible that she did in the midst of every, you know, and, and hot meals. And I mean, like, we all know the power of that. And you didn't live, yeah. Her recipes you all the yeah. And then for it to have that, that kind of ripple effect, that is unbelievable. So thank you so much. And also even just sharing it here, Michelle in the chat said she's just starting her journey 
with cancer um, and treatment and that she hopes she can do something amazing like that too in the midst of all of the struggle. Yep. So like this, the, the ripples just go and go. So um, yeah, thank you. Everybody does a little, right? Like I'm, I'm not changing the world, but- But you if are. Everybody, if everybody does a little bit, right? A little bit of change makes big change. So if this is what I can do and it's become like, this is now Lola Bean's mission. You know, we, we used to do like a little bit of everything, but now we're just gonna like hone in on this. You're all in. Um, yeah, and this is- I love that for you. I love that because I love how much you've brought to all of the different, I mean, throughout the community, like the, the ripples you've sent out and you've supported everyone, but I really love that you've decided to focus in on this because you can have such an, and no one else can have, I mean, it's yours, right? It's yours. <laughs> um, so it's, yeah. And we put the link up in the chat. I'd love for everybody to go, just go um, research too, and just go read the whole story so that you know and then um, whatever I can do too, like if I can do anything with my old branding background to help you out with any of that, I'd love to. There's a lot. I, I have to send uh, Bronwyn an email because um, I'm going to be, you know, reaching out to people because, you know, we plan on doing collaborations. There, you know, yarn releases where proceeds go to um, certain colors that no matter if you buy them today or a year from now, proceeds from that color is, you know, going to this organization. So we have um, a lot of things, you know, we're, we're starting to get them lined up. We just, we sign our lease on our space. So Lola Bean is going to have, you know, a, a 2,500 square foot space now. So once we get through that, right, we'll be able to, you know, really focus on this um, and make it big. I just had an idea, Beth, have we made, correct me if I'm wrong, but with our season nine stars, we can't give anything away yet, but have we made any commitment? I don't think we have. Not yet. We have started to think about it, but we have not pinned anything in yet. So no, I think now is a really good time for decision. <laughs> I know a guy. I'm feeling like, okay, last year it was Jonah's hands and mm -hmm. Ethiopia, and that made so much sense. But maybe that slot has been waiting for this moment to be filled. So I think we just yeah. decided that season nine's um, celebrated I um, love focus. when things come together yes. like this. <laughs> not, yeah. Like I can't oh, do yeah. it, but you know, the puzzle pieces falling into place. Yeah. yeah. We each season, we, we um, highlight a specific cause and that will be this season. So yeah. Thank permission you. to shine. Yeah. Oh, I, I it's kind of it. perfect. Yeah. Perfect. yeah. <laughs> okay. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you for sharing the story. Wow. I don't know how we're going to follow that up. Um, <laughs> Enough of the mushy stuff. Yeah, yeah, like let's get back to the start. Start. Judy and not me. And then you can segue into Judy. That's a good segue. I I I you you all don't get to see all of the, the banter sometimes, but um <laughs> as soon as you know I heard that you know Judy uh is a teacher and, and some of the things that she's doing, my first thing was, do you need yarn? Right? Because you know, I, I happily, when it comes to like, you know, the kids and getting, you know, keeping the craft going, you know, kids is my soft spot. And Bronwyn got a little jealous. Because, I thought, I didn't know it was for the kids. Yeah. Oh, well, you now if Judy wants some for her, she can have some too. That's what I thought it was. Like, I'm not stealing it from little kids. My Bronwyn, Bronwyn got salty because I offered uh, Judy yarn and I've never offered Bronwyn yarn. Oh, you have, but not like in the last couple of years. I stopped because you would insult my yarn. You told me my yarn was baby poop green. Remember? Plutonium. Like, it totally was. Well, you know the kids; they can use any color brownie. Yes. See. No, no. Yeah, they'd be happy to have the yarn. I didn't realize that's what it was for. So I'll be quiet now before I put my foot in again. <laughs> well, I feel like we should introduce Judy officially. I was just gonna say. Yes. I think it's time. time. Beth, let's, let's, we can take me out of highlight and let's let Beth. <laughs> <laughs> so you heard about Adela's generous contribution to Judy as we, in the green room ahead of time, we were just having a conversation and introducing, you know, each other to each other for those who didn't know and uh, said, Judy is a teacher and she teaches kids to knit. And Adela was like, <laughs> do you need yarn <laughs> and the answer was of course <laughs> absolutely 
We always need yarn. So let's talk. I just want to talk a little bit. Why don't you introduce yourself to everyone here and um, talk just a little bit about what you do and why it's related to the yarniverse in some way. Hold on one second, Beth. Can you give us yes. much of a background about Rising Star? and what we do with Rising Star. <laughs> I suppose I get so excited. So the Rising Star program is something that we do to highlight our members. It's one of the ways that we shine a light on the people who make up our yarn, our Yarniverse. Um, and we always say, people, you know, the Yarniverse is full of more than hands, but of hearts, right? And the way that we distribute our talents throughout our communities are, is so important. Um, Judy was nominated. Uh, for this month's Rising Star um, because of her work um, in the community with children, especially. Um, and, and each month we, we, we select someone new. So there's always an opportunity to nominate someone. Head over to, if you're a member, head over to the Yarniverse page in your portal. And there's a place there that you can fill out uh, a rising star form for future rising stars. Did I cover everything, Sunny? Nailed, so. it. Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. All right, Judy, tell us a little bit about what you do. Okay. Well, um, my yarn journey started back in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, when my mother taught me to knit. And uh, we made the, the little requisite uh, slippers with the pom pom on the end, you know, that everybody made back when the dinosaurs roamed the earth. <laughs> and, um, and I made it and I finally finished them. And then she took me to the yarn store. And at that time, again, it was a long time ago, you, there were not many printed patterns. And the ladies in the yarn store would write out, my mother called it the recipe. The recipe, and they would yeah. Take measurements and they would give her a section at the time and she would make things. Um, and I thought that was that took too long and I lost interest in it. But <laughs> I picked it up again when I went to college because crochet was very popular then. That was in the 1970s. And I thought, well, I remember she taught me to knit. I bet I could do this. And that was, of course, before Knit Stars or the Yarniverse or YouTube. So I sat there in my dorm room with books spread out around me and I taught myself how to crochet. And, um, and I loved it and, and I continued doing it. And then I thought, well, I bet I remember how to knit. And I started knitting and, um, and it was great. And when my husband went into the army and he went to start his training, we were only gonna be someplace for uh, a couple of months. So I really couldn't teach, I could only sub. And so I was always crocheting and the other wives were saying to me, well, what is that? And I said, well, this is crocheting and I'm making Hanukkah presents for my grandchildren or uh, for my children at that time. And they said, uh, what will you teach us? So I taught about 12 women how to crochet and it it was great. We sat every day together. We had a wonderful time. Um, And I, you know, I kept bringing this up all the time and I became uh, an educator and then I became a head of private schools. And um, I was here in Tampa uh, when 9-11 happened. And um, I remember I was in synagogue after that. And the rabbi was talking about donating blood and giving uh, giving money. And one of my middle school students was sitting in front of me. And he turned around and said, yeah, and there's nothing kids can do. And it was like a slap in the face. And I went, oh, my God, there's nothing kids could do. There's got to, that's how we heal. We're feeling this as much as anybody. So I started thinking and I thought, well, what if we made scarves and hats for the emergency workers who are out cleaning up the streets and cleaning up everything? So I went up to the rabbi, I knew he was having a second service. And I said, anybody who'll donate hooks or yarn or their time or their expertise, we're going to be making hats. And he said, oh, I didn't know about this. I said, neither did I, but it just started. (laughs) And so we're going to do it. And I had my whole school working. And it, it was great. And then when we finished everything, we I contacted a school in New York and we sent them to those who sent everything to the middle schoolers there. So they hand delivered everything to the different fire stations and to the people out in the so street. So the kids delivered it? The kids, the kids delivered oh, it. That's I, great. The kids, I love that. The hands of children, it should yeah. be given by the hands of children. So um, now I, I'm not ahead of school anymore. I said I was going to retire and my children laughed long and hard. I said, mom, you're never going to retire. You're a teacher. And I said, yeah, I know. So um, I went back to the classroom and I've been teaching third grade. And um, I was sitting and knitting and my kids said, what is that? And I said, that's knitting. And I explained to them. 
can you teach us that? And I thought, oh, I don't know if I can teach him to net. I can teach him to crochet. So I said, well, let's start a crochet club. And the school said, well, you know, we need at least 10 kids to do a crochet club. And I said, well, if it does, it goes, it goes. We had 19 kids. I had to call in volunteers to help me. <laughs> and it was great. And the boys were the ones who were most enthusiastic. Yeah. The kids who were in the club started teaching all the kids in my class. They were tying yarn to pencils and wrapping yarn over and making chains. Oh, yeah. They can and change. one of the mothers stopped me outside and said her kid had made garlands for their house for Christmas. They had chains and chains of garlands because she didn't know what to do with the chains. She hadn't learned the single crochet or the double crochet. So now they're working on um, all kinds of things. But my goal is to unplug them. I think yeah. they're way too connected and they don't talk to each other and they need to communicate. And that's what they're doing. When they come into Crochet Club, they sit, they talk to each other. They share what they've learned. They Look love what they Look at that. Learned. Yeah, we made bracelets. They said, can we make something that we can wear right now? So I brought in a bunch of beads and I showed them how to take a needle and thread the beads onto the yarn. And I said, you know, I'll know how to chain and you've got a real even chain now. So you can do this. Some of them made necklaces, but a bunch of them made bracelets. And the, the one, one was really elaborate, almost covered his whole hand, but they, they just did such a great job and they love it. So well, look at those beads. They were having fun with that. All hands on deck. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how does getting, have you noticed any difference in the classroom with these oh. kids who are highly focused on knitting or crochet rather, um, and not on their devices for periods well, of time yeah Have well, you what's interesting any difference? Is we, we used to do fun friday we still do fun friday in the afternoon if we finish all of our work on friday they get like 30 or 40 minutes mm -hmm. at the end of the day and i've got all these board games and they were always fighting over the board games now there's a big circle of kids sitting on the floor crocheting and they're teaching each other and they're making stuff and one of the boys got really, really good at double crochet. And I said, would you like to learn a three-dimensional stitch? And he said, yeah. I said, it's called the popcorn stitch. So I showed him how to do it. And he said, wow, this is so cool. So I wrote a little pattern for him because he had 30 chains. I said, chain, you know, double crochet. And then, you know, and I told him how to do it. And he said, this is so cool. It's three-dimensional. He was showing everybody and they were all touching it. They were feeling the tactile. Yeah, they, oh, they, that's they, they, so, so cool. cool. One of the kids said, you know what? You could do this instead of playing video games. <laughs> wow, what a good idea. This is so great. I love that. But when it um, comes I, from their minds. Yeah, well, I started, <laughs> when I set up the club, I decided they needed to have something kind of like Taekwondo. So yeah. we start with white yarn. And when they get down their chaining, then they can move to light green yarn. And wow. then, that, then they move to pink yarn, Cats of Pink. Up. Judy, and this that, is brilliant. I so love this idea. Color. So they're like, oh, you're on purple. Oh, my God. You must be really <laughs> good. And so they, they watch each other. And I told them, I said, black yarn is very tough. So when you're really, really good, then you can use black. So Oh, my God. I love the belting color idea that is such a great idea i'm getting a, a lot of questions in the chat right now <laughs> asking like uh, where they can send yarn but before i tell them I'm, i've been saying send an email to hello at knitstars.com and we'll get you hooked up but but before that i mean are, do you have any needs for particular mar materials um, um for your well, clubs that you that other outside of yarn or you know including yarn well, um, a yarn and hooks of eye or larger size. That's eye that's or larger. Clear. Right. And I still go by the letter number. I know I should use millimeter, but I use the letter number. And um, when we start the crochet club, we start, uh, especially the first week when they can figure out which end of the hook to use. Uh, I give them all a plain canvas bag and um, uh, fabric markers. And I tell them this is their chance to create their own bag. I said, uh, a crocheter, a knitter's bag is a very personal thing. It's very important to you. So you need to emblazon this with who you are and what you are. And then I show them, I have my blue and white knitting the world together bag. And I say, this bag is very important to me because Knit Stars is my lifeline to the world. And I don't tell them, but I will tell you for 10 years, I was a caregiver to my husband while I was teaching. 
And my lifeline was knit stars. I don't want to break up here, but I couldn't afford to go, you know, to hear wonderful yeah. teachers, but I could get into knit stars and I learned and I grew that way. Thank you, Shelly. Thank you. I know Shelly's trying to hide up there, no, I think. I but no, I just... I'm... Okay, this is going to be yeah. like... Shelly, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to... <laughs> <laughs> that was a personal uh, message, but it's true. Oh, and, I, and I'm sure it's true for a lot of other people in the universe. Yeah. I don't think you know how many lives you've touched. Mm. So, and then when I saw Jonah, I saw Jonah's book and yeah. I shared this with the kids and the kids got all excited about it. And they said, oh, he must be all grown up now. And I said, he's 15. They said, 15? He was like our age when he got started. He must be rich. And I said, well, there's rich and then there's rich. I said, Jonah used his money and I showed them pictures to build a library for the orphanage where he was. You do for others before you think about what you need and what you think you need. And so now they're all thinking, what can we do? Can we make blankets for the hospital? Can we do something for the elderly? And this is this is the window I'm trying to open up for them. Um, I want to get in touch with Jonah now and... Uh... I'm, I'm thinking a Zoom session is in order with your class. Yeah. Oh, they would, they would, they would be over the moon. They would. I'm they would sure he would that. agree to that if I reached out. He I love that. Him. We should they definitely love do that. Wow. Yeah. I just uh, that means so much to me. What um, you just shared about with your husband and everything, and I, um, I just would like to do a little something for you. So, like, I just would like to just make sure that you have all the future seasons for as long as we're after it, which is hopefully a really, really oh, long time. So we can very much. give duty like lifetime. I should mention, because I asked my principal if it was okay. Um, I'm at the Pinecrest Elementary School in Wesley Chapel, Florida. And okay. I have an incredible principal who's been so supportive of this all the way through. And um, Pinecrest is an A-rated school in Wesley Chapel, one of the few A-rated schools. But uh, what I talked to her about when I came was, I said, I'm old school. And I think computers are great. And I think technology is incredible. But we can't take our eye off the ball. People is what is important. Mm -hmm. And that's what this is about, connecting kids, learning a craft, feeling comfortable with the craft and then sharing it with others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. It is about people. And that's why I'm always like, it is not, yarn is just a conduit. Yarn is just, it, it just so happens that knitting is, you know, like people, we're all connected. Um, right. It really right. is about the people and that's the whole thing. That's the whole thing. You can't ever, like we could all make all the things in the world, but like what matters is what's happening in here today. Right here. That's yeah. right. So it is a human thing, not, not just a yarn thing. So, wow. Wow. I mean, your story is amazing, Judy. I'm just, I, I would like to um, also profile you in an upcoming newsletter. And I'm, I'm actually sitting here. I think you're sitting on a book idea with this, with this. Mm -hmm. with the belt, yeah. right? With the, yeah. the leveling up. Yeah, sorry. Like, uh, I would, I, what I'm trying to do is put together a curriculum that can go to yes. schools across the country. You don't have to be a wealthy school to have this in your aftercare program. Kids don't need to be running around, hurting each other, doing anything. They can do something purposeful and learn something that's a lifetime skill. Yes. And, yes. Um, and, and the other thing, biggest one of the biggest lessons my kids said, I, I told them, I said, it's just yarn. It's just yarn. You make a mistake, you pull it out. I said, it's, you know, it's just like if you make a mistake and there's a racer on the end of the pencil, you just go back go back and you redo it. That's all it is. And they say, but, but I made a mistake. It's all right. And maybe it's a design element. You know, you drop the stitch, just leave it. Maybe it's a design element and you can weave yarn through it later or ribbon, you know, mm -hmm. I Do love something that. fun. You're yeah, it's like an eraser. That's a great okay. metaphor. Yeah. yeah. I'm I not, you're, that one I, down. I already know without, it's like, tell me you're an amazing teacher without telling me you're amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I get on my soapbox and it's hard to get off. I just love my kids. I love soapboxes. Soapboxes. Teachers that get on the soapboxes are the best. <laughs> there's been some really great um, interaction. Yeah. So let's make sure and save our chat roll today so, because there's so we have such a great turnout today. And I want to make sure you get to see back what everybody's 
saying to you. And then we have a prize package to send Judy also as our rising oh, star of the month. So that'll be a little you. fun surprise. We need to make sure we have your current address um, to follow up on that. And it sounds like you and I just need a follow up chat on how we can, you know, work together more with, with your school, what you're doing, whatever we can do to support you with that and an upcoming newsletter feature for sure. So how wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, yeah definitely. Thank you for everything you contribute inside the community and outside. We just really Thanks. appreciate it. Yeah. So this has been so much fun. Yeah. So much fun. I, and I have a random thing I want to share. I just another little shout out while we're doing like spreading good, happy things in the world. I'm going to move around for this one. Sunny, do you have do you have something else to talk about before we and we're going to give a prize away before we're all done? We're about to wrap up, but um, so um, I, I live in Florida now, and and we've been so on the go, it's been hard to make friends, but we've made a couple really good friends at a nearby um, establishment that they they're actually they're both bartenders. They have young kids, and um, my screen looks super dark, so I don't know what's going on there. There we go. Anyway, but on the side. The, girl, the woman, her name is Kristen, she makes cakes. She's passionate about making cakes and she's really, truly amazing. And um, so my boyfriend reached out to her as a surprise for me. And no, don't pull it out. I'm, I'm just going to show it in the fridge because I don't want to mess it up. So this <laughs> Kristen made this cake for me and I need you guys to see it and you'll see why. I'm showing you inside my refrigerator. Okay. So let me see if I can, let me see if I can show you. Can you see it? Yeah, maybe we have to pull it out. Okay. We're going to pull it out because I need you to see. So I'm going to, I want to give this shout out to her because I love that she's doing what I've been talking to her about trying to get out of bartending and just making cakes because she truly, truly has a talent. And um, I want to spread the word in case any of you guys are, I want to see her business grow. And in case any of you guys are um, in Northwest Florida or have friends that are going to get married at the beach, she makes wedding cakes that are unbelievable, but she doesn't knit. And she, I want you to see. This oh one. wow! <laughs> now I can you can you see close enough? Like look like, at the stitches. You does stocking net better than I do stocking net. <laughs> How are you doing? Beautiful. Eat? Look at this. Can you tilt it and let us show you? Look, look at this. So I'm going to share with you. Let's see. I'll put in the chat in the show notes her contact information because she is just getting started with this, and I would love for um to help support her with her business. And so um, it's called her, actually, you guys can go follow if you want, just out of curiosity. Um, her site, her Instagram is called eatcake30a. So it's E-A-T-K-C-A-K-E-3-0-A. Now you guys just also saw my whole house, which I never <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, or a lot, at least my main part of my house. But anyway, she's <laughs> trying to get out of bartending. She works like so hard all the time. They have little kids and they both work just you know, nonstop. And I want to see her like, yeah. And if you notice it had little stars in it too, little knitted stars. So anyway, just a quick shout out. Did you just follow her Adela? Thank you. Thank you. Somebody there just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Adela show Adela's um, was spotlighting it. Eat cake 38. All right. That's a random thing, but I just really want to see this girl get, it'd be so cool. She got a bunch of followers with everybody here today. Hey. Yeah. Okay. Sunny, do we want to give away a prize? Yeah, I'm like overwhelmed. Okay. <laughs> I, I commented in the chat. I was like, I was not prepared for today and I plan these lives. <laughs> so um, that was amazing. I hope you all feel as touched as I do. And I'm sure you do. I'm, I'm, I was going through all the screens and I feel like everyone was just like clutching on to their hearts. And so thank you. Um, thank you, Adela and Casapinka and Judy um, and Shelly and everybody, just like the connections made, I think are just a true, true testament to how much this community means to all of us. And so um, thank you, you guys are like, it was really amazing. Um, I think we should do, Shelly, if you're cool, I think we should do two prizes because that was like just a lot, there was a lot to go through. Are you okay with the mind meld? I had, I was just thinking we need to do at least, we need to do two prizes today. So okay. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the prizes are kind of epic. I think we're going to do two full lines of the Knit Stars yarn um, that we have, which is, Shelly, do you want to rattle them off? I oh, <laughs> This is a test. Okay. Um, Loops Lux Chunky is our original bespoke yarn. Um, uh, let's see. Plant-based plant -based princess, your favorite. So that's the plant-based yarn. 
smoothie, smoothie, which is silk and merino and fizz, fizz, the textural fuzzy. We've got, we have orange in almost all of these. Um, <laughs> yeah, maybe some pink somewhere. And then uh, dream bean, maybe, do we still have orange dream bean? I think a little bit, some of it, some went back to Adela, but I think that's everything. No, oh, that we have the super loops. I love our big giant bulky that's like twinkle, um, soft bulky. Yeah. So you will get a, a lot of yarn <laughs> <laughs> and it will be lovely, lovely package from our amazing um, team at the store. And so um, let's see, hold on, I picked. Okay, the first prize winner is Tina Jameson. So congratulations, Tina. Um, if you guys can email hello at knitstars.com and say you won the Knit Stars yarn line package, <laughs> that will be helpful. So congratulations, Tina. I'm trying to see if I can find you flying in the chat. And then the other prize winner, drum roll, is Mary Margaret Lennon. So congratulations. Yay. And I forgot I'm to share. Congratulations, you guys. And people are asking, and I forgot to say it earlier. My sweater is, um, I put the link in. It's Clay Quay, or I can't remember. It's got a different pronunciation. P-L-A-Y-O-Q-U-E-T by Tin Can Knits. So the link is in there in the chat roll. I don't know if you can see, but I've got some hot loops. Uh, what's the chunky, some chunky behind me. And it's the powder, the powder wrap. I can't say it right with my Michigan accent, Ronnie, but <laughs> I said it right. that's the, that's the chunky. Oh, it's so it's soft. Cool. I love it. Love it's it. It's like a massive, it's wrapped around like three times there. <laughs> Well, congrats to the winners and just huge thank you to Bronnie and Adela and Judy and Gigi and Sunny and Beth all for being here and everybody who showed up today to take this time, not just with us, but just for yourself to talk about yarn and your passion. We really appreciate you guys taking the time. Please do go look at um, Maddie's meals at the link we shared and we'll, we'll put, for those of you in the Yarniverse, we'll put your show notes with all of this. So that you can follow back and not have to go through the massive chat. So thank, thank you. you so much, everybody, for being here. And yay, we have a nonprofit for season nine. We have a give back. Woo! <laughs> Good teamwork, everybody. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.